electric vehicles might not emit harmful gases like carbon monoxide, but they still have an environmental impact. Study have shown that uh, the manufacturing of the batteries, the manufacturing of the EV, actually produce more carbon during the manufacturing period. The carbon footprint drops over the lifespan of the EV. It's the usage period that they have much less carbon. Actually, studies have shown that from cradle to grave, EVs emit about 50 to 51% less CO2 than internal combustion vehicles. The biggest challenge lies with the lithium-ion battery. The EVs need to uh, get things like cobalt and uh, lithium and all these rare earth materials. And this kind of uh, mining also creates carbon emission. And when a battery comes to the end of its life, questions arise over how to dispose of or even recycle it. Environmentalists and industry players are warning of a flood of e-waste. The amount of batteries in the EV is uh, not in one or two kilograms. Plenty of kilograms in a whole is under the, the chassis of the car, under the underbody of the car. So there's a lot of batteries to, uh, to dispose. And how are we going to dispose the batteries? The battery problems could be resolved through recycling and the reuse of the battery's raw materials. Such initiatives are still not widespread, though. Industry statistics show that only 5% of all lithium-ion batteries are currently recycled. There are two main ways to deactivate the lithium-ion batteries, smelting and leaching, and both methods are very costly and this is a major barrier to recycling. Existing methods of recycling are also not environmentally friendly. The majority of batteries are still recycled using pyro metallurgy, which is furnaces, you know, smelting it, uh, trying to separate the metals using heat. So this has a massive um, energy uh, footprint and it has a huge carbon footprint, of course, um, and the gas emissions are considerable. You could imagine firing um, a furnace the size of two, two HDBs or two condos 24 hours a day. Green Lion hopes to address these challenges with its lithium ion recycling technology. So we actually directly recycle it so it, it, uh, it can be used again in a brand new battery. Lithium ion battery precious metals can be infinitely recycled. So if you use a hydrometallurgical process or a, a chemical process to rejuvenate these battery, um, these battery uh, materials, they can actually be recycled millions of times. In this manner, Green Lion has been able to create a circular economy around the EV battery, retrieving, recycling and recirculating the raw materials such as cobalt, copper, nickel and lithium into new batteries. Our technology is closed loop. What that means is that we never discharge anything other than um, items for sale that can be sold. Um, and we reuse everything else. So the chemicals and the water discharge, we, we recycle back into our system. And what we produce is pure lithium and cathode material. Apart from the battery, there is another question that needs to be addressed for the EV to be truly emission friendly. That relates to a country's power grid and where the electricity to charge the EV is going to come from. How can we move away from fossil fuel into more renewable energies like wind power, solar, and so on? Take, for example, Sweden, Norway, these Scandinavian countries, they are very much into renewable energy. And so for them, using EV cars is even better because uh, the energy is coming from all this renewable energy. But for certain other countries, it can be a problem <laughs> because they are getting the electricity from coal-fired power plants. In Singapore today, the electric vehicle population is still relatively small compared to its petrol counterpart. 
data from the Land Transport Authority showed that there were 1,549 electric cars in circulation as at June the 30th. That's only 0.24% of the total car population. The numbers have been steadily increasing, though. Since 2019, the electric car population is up 38%. Industry players say that in other ASEAN countries, the rate of adoption will be slower. In the uh, poorer countries, people aspire to have a motorcycle. And after a motorcycle, they aspire to have a car. And how can they uh, afford this expensive EV? But if technology is able to evolve to a, st a stage where it can be very inexpensive, why not? EV proponents argue that the costs have come down quite a bit. Thanks to the improvement in manufacturing technology as well as economies of scale, the cost of battery in general has been steadily and significantly coming down. So in some cases, almost 10 times cheaper, therefore making EVs more affordable in the process. And because it is generally greener, uh, government around the world are also incentivizing EV purchases as compared to petrol or diesel cars, which brings down the price further. So in Singapore today, for example, a BMW iX3's price is lower than its equivalent petrol counterpart. Still, it may be unrealistic to expect worldwide adoption of electric vehicles. Industry players expect that hybrid and petrol diesel vehicles will still have a place in the future of mobility, together with the electric vehicle.